Hi everybody and welcome back to the Art Life YouTube channel. I'm Mrs B and I'm here to show you how to get creative. Now I have to say this is probably one of my most favourite artworks of all time mainly because it is so tropical and colourful and really fun to do. It has lots of different layers and therefore lots of different skills that you're going to be putting during this task. Now, firstly we started off with watercolours, then we used some acrylics for some details and then we used some really special paper clay to create a three-dimensional flamingo. Come with me and I'll show you how to do it. Now this task can actually be adapted, it doesn't have to be a flamingo. And the scope is huge. All you need to say to the students or your child is create an animal and a background for it. So I've done a tropical background with a flamingo, but obviously you could do a zebra in the jungle. You could do a monkey swinging from some vines. I'd love to see if you've adapted this task and if you've come up with something of your own. So please tag me at Art Life Art Lessons on Facebook so I can see. What you're going to need for this tropical kind of task is some watercolours to do our sunset background. You'll need some acrylic paint, mostly just a couple of green tones, and some magic clay. Now this stuff is fantastic. It is nice and soft and easy to mould and then sets hard. So I'll show you where I get my magic clay once we start that part. You could also, as an optional extra, use some pastels or a sharpie if you're wanting to add some details over the top. Let's get started. Now, I love giving myself a bit of a border using masking tape. The main thing is to make sure you don't stick down the masking tape too tight onto the paper, otherwise it will rip and that will be such a shame. So I'm just giving myself a nice border there for my artwork. I'm working in an A4 portrait style today um, but this can be a larger task absolutely can be a larger task um, and what I'm focusing on now is creating a background now you have to think of what might be around where a flamingo is we're going to create the flamingo out of some special clay later but for now I want to create a really beautiful sunset tropical kind of scene and I'm going to do that with some watercolors now the first thing I'd like for you to do is to imagine a bit of a horizon line, pretty much in the middle of your page here. I'm actually just going to paint sort of a yellow line, just like that so you can see. Okay, above the line we're going to create a sunset, sort of blended sunset, and then here we're going to do a C with the sunset being reflected. So let's start with the sky. Now, I often get asked what paints I use, and these are very well loved, these ones, but they are a Micador set. Um, they're fantastic in the range of colors that they offer, and their pigment is really strong too, and they're fairly cost effective. So um, this is all I use, these ones in my classroom and at home, um, and I've put a link down below if you would like to get some from yourself from Zart Art. So I've just painted side to side there in a horizontal kind of action. A bit of a rounded sun shape. Now when working with watercolours, you do need to use quite a bit of water because you want the colours to blend. Now I'm bringing in some orange now and I'm working with it while my yellow is still wet. And you can see in doing that, still working side to side, but my two colours are blending. They're merging really nicely. I still want to keep that sort of semicircle shape. You can see here it's not blending. And if that happens, I just need to add a bit of water. You can see it does. Now I'm going to bring in some pinks and some reds. Little bit over the top of my orange and paint all the way to the top of my page here. There. 
there's our sunset. I'm going to do something similar down below here. However, I'm going to start with some blue. And I'm going to do the blue around the outside. Again, I'm gonna work in a horizontal kind of fashion because we want to suggest some water. Now notice my watercolor is getting very kind of scratchy here. It means that I need to add more water to my paint and you can see the color comes out in a more vibrant way after I do that. All right. We do need to work fairly quickly because we don't want our blue to dry out. We're gonna add our sort of sunsetty colors now. Side to side with my yellow. Add a little bit of orange. You can see that the blue will kind of mix with the orange a little bit. That's fine. You don't want it to mix too much because then it'll go kind of brown color. So I'm kind of just adding some of my sunset colors on top to suggest the reflection. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. We are going to do um, some other layers over the top, but we'll let that dry first. Now you might've noticed that I have swapped my watercolor paints for some acrylic paints. The reason we're working with acrylics now is we're going to do some sort of tropical leaves around to border our artwork. And if we use watercolor over the top of watercolor, it doesn't, it kind of just stays translucent and it won't stand out. So. Some acrylic paint will be a lot thicker than the watercolor and you will be able to paint directly over the top without it going see-through. So I've just chosen some sort of tropical kind of leaf colors here. I've got some yellow and some aqua and green. I'm gonna get a smaller brush now. Notice when painting over the top of the watercolor, it's thicker, so it's not overly see-through. Now notice I'm using a combination of colors. I'm using the green, and then I'm bringing in some of the aqua over the top and bringing in some yellow. It just means that the artwork is less flat. If we just use one color, it wouldn't look as realistic. We, we wanna add some depth of color. So that means using three or even four colors that work well together is gonna to help you to do that. I'm also going to add some sort of leaves coming down from the top as well. Now, once you're done, you're going to let it dry completely. And we're going to go in and add some details and create a bit of a flamingo to sit in the tropical oasis here. I might just add a few little flowers with some pink as well. So if you're an art teacher, this is such a fantastic activity because you're using such an array of materials. You've got blending techniques with watercolors. You've got using different tones with acrylics. And we're also going to have a go at using some special kind of clay uh, to create something on top. So it's um, definitely very level, definitely lots of different things to learn. Okay, we're going to let him dry. So now that my layer of acrylics is pretty much dry, I'm going to show you a few different options for adding details. Firstly, you could use a pastel. Oil pastels will go really nicely over the top of acrylic paint, as you can see here. So when you're drawing the leaves, you could do another kind of green color to add some details like that. It's, they're generally fairly thick lines, so you're not gonna get a lot of detail, but it's gonna add some color. Another thing you could do is use a permanent marker. This is gonna mean that the colors are a lot more bold, the details are gonna stand out, and you'll get quite a lot of detail in there because the tip is a lot thinner than a pastel. 
Another option is a chalk marker. This is pretty much just like a paint pen. And I got this one from Kmart. You can see that the color is really vibrant on top of acrylic and you're able to add really good details. So I'm gonna have a go at doing a bit of everything just to show you what it looks like. I'm gonna add some details with my chalk pen. This is an optional extra and definitely not necessary. But I always say, what can you add to your artwork to make it even more interesting? So I'm just highlighting the, the tropical leaves now. And I've chosen a bit of a darker color there. Wonderful. So our background is pretty much done. I'm now going to work on creating a flamingo that will sit in front here in a 3D sort of way. Okay, so now we're going to create the flamingo. And I'm going to show you how to use some paper clay. This is a brand called Magi Clay, and I get it from Zart Art. And I've put a link down below if you want to get this specific brand. It's quite good because it actually has a pack that comes in really beautiful colors. I know that you can get something similar from Kmart as well. So with paper clay, it's fantastic because it's not messy at all. As you can see, it's really moldable. It's really soft, stretchy. You can actually even mix colors with it. So in the event that you don't have any pink for our flamingo, you could mix white and red together just by kneading it like this and you will get a nice pink. This packet actually already has the colors that I'm after. I've got a bit of a, a brighter pink here as well, which I'm going to use together with the light pink. All right, so I'm just gonna soften it to start off with. The cool thing about this is once it's out in the air, it dries hard. And so we're gonna be able to make sort of a three-dimensional flamingo. And we're gonna stick him onto our background and he will pop out from the page because he will literally be three-dimensional <laughs> using the clay. So. I think for the body, I'd like to have, I'm going to leave a bit of a section here to make the wing this nice magenta pink. But for the rest, I'm actually going to mix these two colours together. I'll show you how it works. What I'm going to do is create an effect called marbling. You can see it's starting to marble there. So I'm going to twist the colours, but not all the way so that they create a new colour. I'm going to create a bit of a marble effect for my flamingo here. All right, now that I've got my colors, I kind of want to give myself an idea of what a flamingo might look like. So very loosely going to draw an oval there. Then I'm going to draw a larger oval down the bottom here. Now this is the head and the body connects with a bit of a, a neck that goes up like that. Their legs are very long but we don't need to worry about that right now. Their beak kind of comes out like that. So I'm gonna focus on the body. I'm going to do a nice big body and it's fantastic manipulation activity for the kids because uh, they have to mold it themselves, put it into the correct shape. So we want it to be in the right shape, but also be rounded like this. Now for the head. For the neck, I'm gonna make more of a, a snake kind of shape. And the greatest thing about this is that it attaches so beautifully. Look at that. I'm gonna mold it in a little bit more. I want it to sort of look like it's always been there so I'm just going to manipulate it a little bit but you can sort of see the basic shape I've got going. Now as mentioned I wanted to have a bit of a, a wing sticking out like that so I might sort of just flatten, flatten it a little bit. I can manipulate some bumps like that and just place that on. 
if I place it on like that, it'll stay sticking up. You can actually also add textures. I just have a ruler here. I've created a bit of a winged texture just by doing that. These are all just optional extras. See how easy it is to manipulate. Super simple. They have a bit of a black tip on their nose, so I'm just going to wrap some black around the nose here. So you can start to see the idea today. You could either choose to make the legs out of black magic clay or you could choose to draw them. I think I might make mine today. They need to be super skinny. just sort of pinched his bottom there to make a bit of a tail shape and we're gonna let that dry so that the magic clay can set after that we might need to use just a little bit of glue on the back so that it can stick to the background but you get the idea our gorgeous 3d flamingo on a tropical oasis background So it's as simple as that. Thank you for joining me today and I really hope that you are able to create something you're really proud of. Please make sure that you check out all the other lessons that I've created. There's heaps of lessons, heaps of exciting and colourful tasks for you to do, for you to get creative at home or in the classroom. Thanks for joining me.